Fuck. All right, let's we're rolling. Rolling. Planet B presents presents Cult and Culture Podcast. Hey, welcome to episode forty-two of the Colton Culture Podcast. I'm Justin Pearson, and I'm Luke Henshaw. This episode features the Here's Collective, uh, the two, I guess, core collective people behind mm-hmm. it, um, Jenna and Scott. Um, they're they're a wild couple of people mm-hmm. <laughs> in so many ways. <laughs> We'll get into it in the podcast, but um, Gabe Serbian kind of uh, got me involved with them working on a track for their most recent album. We're still here, and um, unfortunately, Gabe didn't end up working with them on the album. Um, mm. But um, I'm grateful that he uh, got us in touch with each other, and, and then uh, you know through this path, we ended up um, doing uh, Here's and Def Club tour, and then also obviously having him on this podcast, which is just wild. Um, yeah, the videos all look cool if you guys... <laughs> on stage, yeah. <laughs> uh, Jen is a force to be reckoned with, um, and then and then oh, yeah. Scott, the, their guitar player, played drums at, when we would cover the Nirvana song together. Mm-hmm. Um, who also is like, yeah, you can play guitar and and drum and rip on both instruments. Like that's so, not fair for most uh, people. Yeah. People get one if at all any, um, but they're just like such a um, awesome force. Um, it was a trip to to be able to tour with them, and and the the people that come out and support them was were just really inspiring, and not to be um, weird or a poop or anything, but like I was just kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always thinking like, and jokingly like, oh, punk is dead. Like it's it's definitely dead. Mm-hmm. Um, but but playing with them gave me hope. And I, when I say punk, I use like uh, the term in a in an odd way like not like punk rock punk it without the rock part without the mm-hmm. like you know hot topic like capitalistic kind of bullshit endeavor it's just it's straight up like an ethical moral thing um it was really really inspiring to see the people that come out to see them and the positivity um so i don't know it was good it was really uh eye opening for me yep. um and they went to yoga with us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We dragged them to the yoga studio down the street. Um, and if you haven't heard a previous uh, podcast, a couple back um, with two of our favorite yoga instructors, you probably should check it out. Um, that's also equally as wild as this one that you're about to uh, dive into. Um, so yeah, it was funny to, <laughs> to have yeah. Jenna go to yoga. Uh, she had a, a rough a rough go in that class, um, rightfully so because. Like when we would go on stage, it was, it was like a fucking tornado hit yeah. <laughs> every time. Uh, not always in the best way. Uh, not always in, not best way, but I mean like not always in the most practical way because uh, Jenna would usually land on most of the drum set and uh, things <laughs> would kind of stop um, in a in a good way. But um, yeah, they're always on tour. You should check them out if you can. They have an insane catalog of amazing records. Um, sometimes it plays a two piece. Sometimes they're a full band. Both of them are insane, um, and it's just nice to have uh, people on on our. On our we've been yeah. lucking out; like everyone is so sick on 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 our podcast. Yeah. Uh, I feel bad for other podcasts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Let's name them off. Yeah, the uh, I'm joking. Um, yeah, the, we're everyone's been just so amazing, and it's it's great. So obviously, they fit right in. Um, Yep. Yeah, check let's, it out. Let's dive into this one. Um, we'll see you on the other side. Yep. Hey, 
Hey, I'm Scott. I play guitar in <laughs> Ears Collective. Man. I'm Jenna, and I'm a mess all the time. There it is. <laughs> Um, okay, cool, awesome. That was great. That was weird. Uh, <laughs> um, there's so it's funny when we do these podcasts. I always, always like, let's start here. Here's this thing. I have so many fucking things I want to start with, but um, and I also one. what? Oh, I'll, you I'll pick, pick one. I will pick one. I have, <laughs> um, and I also talk a lot. I think I talk too much. Sorry to Luke and to our listeners. Mm. Um, I don't notice. Fuck. Um, there's a thing that I've been tripping out on a lot lately is like, um, you know how people, you know, like there's this band called The Exploited and they are like, punk's not dead. And I'm like, no, it's fucking dead. It's completely dead. But then I, I am like constantly um, corrected. And I, a lot of it happens, It's it's been happening and it's been happening the last few nights on tour especially. But like, for instance, um, I, I saw Converge play not that long ago and I, I like the band a lot and I like them as people a lot. But I also toured with them in the past and I, and I kind of thought punk and hardcore was you know essentially dead because it was just kind of the dumb shit but i saw this really cool thing where there was like um like all the weirdos were there and like the cool you know strange punks like it changed there's like younger people that are down for fucking cool shit and it's not just like hardcore dudes anymore you know and it it was nice to see the future happening and i've been seeing it like last night in la and hopefully tonight in san diego like it's cool and i'm glad that we're on the you know, we're part of that thing, uh, uh, the change, the shift. Um, how do you feel about that? <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know. I think we, I feel like we're pretty lucky that we, we bring a lot of freaks and weirdos. Yeah. But I don't, I've still gone, I've gone to a couple of hardcore shows lately where, I don't know, I, I definitely staged over onto a bunch of 40 year old, like, cis mm. straight white dudes. Yeah. Yeah. And there weren't many weird people there <laughs> but well, like but I, I i i believe you were there representing yeah. you know oh cool come on or no <laughs> that wasn't so that, you know i was being i that was sincere i was like oh but yeah i don't know well but i think like is there the element of like because uh, i thought we were in Las Vegas the other night, and I was like mm-hmm. oh there's there's like mm-hmm. fuckheads there this dude wearing a confederate flag jacket and shit i'm like what yeah it's whatever at the show yeah, it was like some biker shithead. Oh, it was like a dude at the bar, not a dude that went to the show. He was there at the show while you were playing. And but like, just... we interrupted him. Do you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? He didn't come to our show wearing a Confederate flag jacket. We went to a bar where a dude was wearing a fucking, that jacket. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know exactly. Because like when we I... played with the dwarves and fucking That's crazy Pensacola, in itself. Like, it, that, that was it. It was terrible. Yeah. But there was like, and it was a mess. And there's a whole fucking story about it. But a kid showed up wearing like, a rebel flag back patch yeah. and I remember uh, I was a little unhinged and I was like what the fuck is up with this fucking like I don't know it was, it was crazy I think you called him out on, on, on the mic yeah that's great oh yeah yeah it was it was a little tense yeah. it was great yeah I don't, but know, I, don't I just, come to our shows with that shit no shit but I think like look over here in Las, Las Vegas and there's just like like I don't know I just hear I'm too observant but like some guy walked in and he's like F- another fucking Poser with the mohawk talking about our our Scott. From, <laughs> I was like, dude, wait, somebody said that out loud. He said it to his, like his friend, and I was cool. like, that motherfucker. And then he was like, just psyched when we played. But I was like, you know, and of course me, I'm like, fuck this dude dissing our friend. What super his... cool stuff was this guy wearing? I don't fucking know. It's a haircut. <laughs> Shut yeah, up. yeah, he was he was just he was doing his own thing. Uh, but I just expected there to be like more um, negativity. <laughs> uh, um, I'm sure you guys get it, right? I mean. I feel we're pretty. I think we're pretty lucky because you, you come out. You're just like we're here, and and this is what we're doing. Like, don't fuck with us. Well, we got there was like negativity maybe, in like we've been doing this third this year's thirteen years, uh, and like one of the reasons we started having like pop songs in Beyond I Love Pop was like it would weed out the bros and like the, the interlude pieces. Yeah, yeah, and it's like fun gives us a second to breathe sometimes. But like at the beginning we were playing like you know like like nine minute sets with like 20 songs and then there'd be like assholes just beating the shit out of each other but not in a fun way Mm -hmm. and then like britney would come on they'd be like oh fucking gay and i'm like that's what's (laughs) up get in the fucking back (laughs) yeah and it's like worked and i I think most people know either who we are or what we're about if you're at one of our shows it's pretty crazy when the the interludes come on and like the like the cindy lopper interlude come on and people like start dancing and i'm like and i and i judging people because i do that but i'm like oh this fucking this bro dude with like a you know uh, I don't know like a pick your um, 
like a Cro-Mags t-shirt, you, you know, <laughs> then they're like dancing and I'm like, oh yeah, cool. Maybe there is hope, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, I just, like, you don't, like, it's okay to have fun. And then I, I think when we're yeah. I'm just like, be yourself, have a good time. And like, and then if, if you don't want to do that, that's okay. You can fucking be sad and boring or just like mm. yourself. Did it start <laughs> musically with the interludes? Like that kind of stuff? Or was it like more traditional? It, we had we had we had samples. It was like, like, movie sample. Did you core. find a way to to like fucking jab people? <laughs> you know, like like to to yeah, pick with your the, lane. You know, the like... uh, annoying sounds that were coming out of the speakers. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, which which annoying ones? The samples or the music? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, okay. Um, that's like that's the pretty... first thing was like sounds sounds like looks like hell. Sounds like shit. Queer as fuck. Looks it's like, like hell sounds like shit. That's great. Yeah, queer yeah. song. That's good. That's the tagline. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it was at yeah. one point. Yeah, still is. I guess I don't know. Scott looks great. You do look great. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, so, uh, like logistically speaking, or like I guess musically speaking, on like the logistical logistical side is it's funny because you you were telling about how you you all did the the two orchid um, reunion shows and you like fucked them up. They played as a two piece one night and then a oh. four piece the next night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, oh. It just seems like such a like a shithead move in a in a cool way, you know. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> it was cool. I had I had more than one person t say like, you play guitar one night and drums the other. Like that's quite a flex. And I was just like, <laughs> that's so sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, th I thought it was cool. I didn't realize that you were drumming in the band and it's funny because well we do the Nirvana cover and you've been playing drums and I don't ever get to watch you because I have to like. Make sure Jenna mm -hmm. doesn't kick me in the shin or what. Watch him next time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> we can have, we can have your Scott monitor Jenna. Ooh. Yeah. Then, I kind of like that. <laughs> uh, he, he always just kind of like goes to the side, and it's just like you should be involved too. I agree. So this, yeah, that can be, that can be his role. Um, let's dive into the odd. I, I mean, odd in a good way, like how you r arrange these records with all these features. It seems, it seems, um, well, because we do it sometimes, like Planet B does it, and and it, and but you, you like just go full bore, like every everybody's on a record. It seems never um, again. You're not doing that. Any, <laughs> you're not doing that anymore. I mean, I, I'd actually, I, I still would very much love to like still make music with like new friends, old friends, et cetera. But like that record was tough. There's two that are like that, right? Or is there more? There's two. The last one was like since there's there like, like two people on every single track, yeah, um, mm -hmm. or more. But like that that one was was, was <laughs> that one was pretty brutal. But yeah. like I'm so like honored that it actually came out because like there was a moment where I was like I don't know if this is gonna come out. It was it was brutal, but I, we we figured it out. I mean I didn't think it was gonna, cause I didn't, so Gabe Serbian, it, you know I I love him so much. He was like. He had he had the best taste in music. So anytime he was like, "You gotta check this shit out," I was like, "Oh, this is sick." So he's like, "Oh, I'm working with these people. You have to check this out." And I was like, "Whoa, what the fuck?" And then I and then Luke recorded my vocals here, and then Gabe didn't do anything, and he passed away. And yeah, but I'm glad that I got on it because of him. And now here we are, and this is fucking sick. But you guys have wrangled <sighs> some 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 crazy shit. I don't I don't know. Like maybe you can talk about some of them. Um, I mean the 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 easiest the thing I always say is like, if you're like, the longer you're punk, like, the more, the the older you stay, like, punk and shit, like, you just end up meeting everybody or, like, being, like, a degree of separation from folks or, and then, like, some of the, a couple of them I just shot my shot and was like, hey, would you like to be a part of this? Yeah. And, yeah. Well, it, it because. It just worked out. The punk thing's interesting, too, because you do kind of veer out of, like, that's, going back to, like, how I said punk is dead and how it's actually not dead, it is redefined by everything that's happening always so that's and which is good but i wonder like where your like i air quotes non-punk punk um collaborators might might come from and also like like who like who have you grabbed that you were like oh shit they're they're venturing out of their comfort zone to, could you let's admit let's be honest here like Shirley the music's brutal like was, yeah, was, sure. was awesome that was like because she did a spoken word on the the friends lovers favorites lp and that was just so we went on tour screaming females marissa had an oscar is like a great friend she had worked with shirley and i was like yo you think that like she would do something with us and it was like and marissa just like i'll email her and then i got an email 
from Shirley Manson being just like, what's up? What do you want? And I was like, what is fucking happening? Yeah. Uh, and then we sent her the song, uh, Invisible, I think. Like, and and she was like, I'll, I'll like read these lyrics or whatever and you can do what you want. And so we use it as the intro. She invited us backstage to like, or like to come to our show in Philly. And like, uh, it was just tipsy enough to be like, you gonna sing on our next record? What's up? <laughs> like she's so silly and so much fun, and it was it was it didn't feel like it felt like just like meeting a new friend. She was like, "Yes," I was like, "You promise?" She's like, "Yes," so she did. And, and then like, how'd you did you was it tough to get her to like do it? You know, like no. do it like right? You know what I'm saying? Like I sent her. Worked I, with people that are like not, um, you know, I'm trying the whole to... thing is like something else musically. Like you grab someone that's not part of like mm -hmm. sure insane shit I mean I can't think of anyone that's on that record where it was like a fucking problem I don't mean like a problem like or like diff like more difficult than just it being a billion people like wrangling yeah, that like seems a billion fucking people. crazy too um, and then mi the mix uh, the mixing was like the worst um, yeah but I don't I don't think there is like anyone there's a couple like on there where I'm like that is that is not what I thought you would send or like it, which is kind of cool. It's like, like uh. I'm not great at doing like visual art. So I like will commission friends to do it. And then they show me something. I'm like that. I, that's like completely different than what I thought it was going to yeah. be. And sometimes it sucks and, and sometimes it's cool and it's just like what it is. But yeah. The artwork on the new record's so sick. That is our friend Rosemary. It's fucking incredible. Yeah. We, she was originally going to do like a, uh, it's, I basically just bought a, a portfolio from her. I was like, I like this, 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 oh, this, yeah. this, and this. And she <clears throat> oh, was that's like, cool. Yeah. It was fucking awesome. It's, yeah, her her shit is insane. Um, I want to ask, like, well, while we're on the topic of, like, getting people, like, featured on, on your album, like, who, who would you be up for working with that you think, um, like, let's give, like, a call out right now and be like, hey, so-and-so, you know, like, who, like, yeah, we have connects. <laughs> uh, uh, yo, Kurt Cobain. Um, when I, when I did the the turned out a punk podcast, and I just remember he was like, Damien was like, oh yeah, my career was on here, and I was like, I want my career from MXPX on a fucking here's record. I never heard that of would be I've never heard of him. Incredible. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, no, you're an elitist we, prick. I am an elitist <laughs> prick. Yeah. We have there's the line we drew, we drew it because we went to the punk rock museum and we 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 were like, oh yeah, you like that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I skipped it over, which is fine. But um, no, I'm not judging you, and I think that I know those people. I mean, I know of the band. Um, yeah, I mean, I, like that. I'm literally just thinking of it. Cause it's funny, but it's I'm I'm dead serious. I think it would be fucking sick. But uh, I like dude, Mel Banana was like for me personally. I was just like, well, done. So, <laughs> um, so I can't. I'm sure you have people like I think there's so many like like I would love to ask Liam to play bass on like one of our uh, from Dillinger. Yeah, because like now like so it's not friends. just limited to like vocal it's uh who, like all kinds of instrumentation mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah yeah because i think it wasn't gabe originally gonna do drums gabe was gonna do drums yeah. on the song that you're on okay and then i thought i assume i thought gabe was just gonna be the drummer for the record so he was gonna do drums for that song and then he was uh was going through whatever yeah. and then but we we had like scott has like five songs and I was like, well, if you'd like want to do an EP with us. And so he was like, he was going to play drums for that EP. Yeah. And God, I wish that fucking happened. On it, like, I'm so, like, I get like worked up about it a lot. And like, because of him, we're here. And like this friendship, like, I don't know. It's, it gets yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. It gets me in my fields and it's really fucking incredible. And I mean, we, so we wrangled gone. him all the time mm -hmm. and it was very hard I'm not saying this in like a in a diss, but like it, he just had a lot going on, and he was a very complex human being, yeah. and so it was really hard to get the the product. You know, like can we just get this done? Because he's even like, I mean, Luke did this record with him. Um, yeah, you can talk about it, like the 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 variations album. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Well, fuck. It was when you guys were recording the track for Incompressa, and he was too lazy to take his drums home. 
<laughs> that night so he came over the next day and i was just like hey let's just jam out for a little bit and then we did and he's like can i leave my drums again and then eventually we started recording and made a record but it was uh a lot of times he would text me the next day and be like hey uh I don't if he w he would be very funny about it but but would flake out a lot and had like a lot of shit going on to where it would be like we're like so almost done with this track but and then it would be like a drummer <laughs> yeah I but, like I just like yeah yeah that too oh, but yeah, it I, goes back to what you were saying about the difficulty with collaborating with so many people it's just like you're always waiting and then it's like you get it and it, it's not what you expected so you got to like shape it a little different on like on my end you know yeah, and, and yeah. then i have to fucking edit everything and then you have to fucking mix everything and you're like fuck it's, some some folks sent like it's not just... like a stem or like a whatever but like chunks of their lyrics oh mm -hmm. and just as a pile and it's just like Shucks. where does this go <laughs> yeah yeah we figured it out huh. and like but yeah dude that 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 record was like the we're still here was over either over or almost 60 hours of mixing just mixing yeah i mean that that makes sense with all the people involved also like you have different studios and different mm -hmm. you know you have there's yeah. so much crazy shit to deal with shout yeah. out to steve roach at permanent hearing damage who like was incredibly sweet about it mm -hmm. very patient affordable mm -hmm. it was wild but, yeah um could, Wait, can I, I who would like who would you want to on a record that's a good question i honestly have yeah thought a ton about it yeah i just think about like bands that i'm just like that band's cool that that person has a cool voice and i'm trying to think of like i don't know i can't think about like on the spot i can't really yeah come up with anything i always think like outside of the box like who could we grab that's like not i don't the two things one is like not in in this realm of of obscure music but also like someone that's like huge that'd be fucking so rad obviously rad for like a, yeah, a, a visibility, I mean the but... handful of like, there's a couple huge people on there in it, and like there's there's a reason the record did so well or has so many eyes on it is because of, it's not just like us or the music we wrote. It's yeah, mm -hmm. a buttload of like new collective members. Like you know, it's it's, it's pretty. It's, it's insane. Like PR basically. Okay, so you know what yeah, I mean? I hate those kind of terms. It but sucks, the, but it's what it, you know. The yeah. marketing aspect is very um, appealing to. That's why that giant Ovi strip is on there. It's I just know. like check this out, yeah. and then, you know. Yeah, it is funny also watching people be like, "Who the fuck is this band?" Like when it's like you know, like Anthony Green or like 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 uh, Frankie Iro, like all like the popular or like pretty voices and stuff. And I was like, uh, this is like dog shit, like blah blah. And I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> well, what about like online, like the the metadata? You know, does it does it register like for like if you're looking up, I don't know, garbage the band, and then and then you get you get that, you know. Uh, Right, because she's know. from garbage. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so yeah. you know. I how... mean, I I know that there's been things about like there's been like because there's like garbage fans or whatever. Mm. It's like Shirley Manson on like this record. Yeah, I know that exists, but I like I do. I don't know. The you said metadata, is, and yeah, I just wanted to like. It's a, it's it, it's really. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't like it either. But um, but I do wonder about that because it it could be really like one of the most beneficial, mm. rewarding pieces to have like a random normal human being get the track because of because they are you know and then next you know they're on another trajectory in life you know so i've never thought about like it changing someone's life or like but that that's cool but like honestly i'm just like i can't believe i get to work like we get to do for me personally like holy shit i get to like work with these people that like i grew mm -hmm. up like listening or that whereas like, i'm like oh my god these like rock stars or something and and it's just like and you meet them and they're normal people like normal or not normal yeah. do you know what i mean yeah, yeah. normal um, as in like uh tangible or something maybe yeah it's like not like not like fucking machine gun kelly or something yeah shit. yeah like yeah like didn't you like y'all ran into like chris novoselic or something right on the that street that was great yeah, yeah yeah and he just was like oh, hey yeah like that that's awesome crazy because we, then we were like talking and he was like that's really funny because that's why we ended up covering that Nirvana song because we were like, yeah, we were gonna maybe cover a Nirvana song. He's like, oh, which one? And you know, and then we like <laughs> had this. I was just like, this is bizarre, um, but it's like such a nice guy, and he's yeah. so um, like on the level because he was like, oh, I was just hanging out with um, God damn it, I forgot his name, uh, the politician. Um, but he's like doing all this like really cool like activist work and stuff, you know, and and it, and it was just 
I was like, oh my god, I, I, I love you. Like, I'm not a big, huge Nirvana fan, but the, the, those are the important things to me. Like, meeting him and having him just be on this, ex, like, the right level of, of humanity, you know? Or even, like, a level of humanity. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, having some, like, compassion or just, like, seeing shit in the world. Like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Seeing, like, Shirley post about Palestine all the fucking time on, like, the garbage site uh, oh, on, yeah. on like the Instagram I'm just yeah. like fuck yeah yeah like I don't know it's cool I, I mean it is cool to like we um we had a, a, a guest on our um podcast Michael Malarkey and speaking of the like the Palestine thing because and it's funny because he's like known for like uh being like a vampire on TV and stuff like that and like but he also does he's also in a hardcore band and that's that's kind of like how him and I intersected because someone was like yo there's this fucking dude from Vampire Diaries that's or um this guy, um, a locust tattoo. And I was like, what? Like, <laughs> that's weird. And then, and then we became friends and he was on our podcast, but he's constantly like being vocal about, mm -hmm. about politics. And I'm like, dude, I don't know how you do it because I can barely stand these motherfuckers that come at me. And he's got like millions and millions of motherfuckers coming at him. You know, yeah. I'm like, dude, I would just be like, I'm done. But, um, well, I don't know. My, I just, I just derailed myself. But, um, but, the, but, but it is cool to like, to like see those people that are, out of our like immediate bubble, I guess, or however you want to address sure. it. Yeah. Or like not in, yeah, not in our, like our like bubble of like punk activism community, whatever. And yeah. But, cool. and, then, and then it goes back to like how I was saying there's like this, se there's seemingly this like progressive shift in things because I really do feel like if a, if a kid could see what you all do, it would, it would be the most mind blowing thing. Like for me, I always talk about how I saw the cramps and it and it fucking changed everything when I was twelve and and like yeah every twelve year old should probably see the cramps you know like so not and not that you guys are the same as the cramps but you you offer this thing that's just so unique and so like uh, I hate the terms but like progressive like it's this thing that's like this is the fucking future little person younger person like check this out mm -hmm. and, instead of checking out uh, it's yeah. been cool like we Machine I think Gun we Kelly. often like we've had like a lot of scenarios where like not even I mean we're we're not you like we're in our 40s but like so like mo usually younger people period but like coming up and telling us how much like we meant to them and and it's usually like it's like obviously a lot of trans folks yeah. or like freaks and it's it's like an honor yeah. and like this like have like ugh, I don't like this isn't like I'm not bragging like but like people like talked about like our records are us like existing, like saving their lives. And my, that is my a big deal. My answer always is fucking same. There's literally songs where I'm like, Hey, you I'm not going to kill myself because love you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and I really appreciate that by the way, like just cause it's, it's in our mm -hmm. world too. Like, but when you say like, you have this like very positive loving thing and, and we're, and we're here for you and to fight it used for to not you. be, it used to be super fucking mean. <laughs> like, yeah. or, like, and like less about like, like supporting and loving the people that, that we care about and more like you know we're still like fuck cops and a cab and like, yeah all, but it used to be like my the lyrics i was angrier and i'm still angry but i'm just like trying to f focus on it's very hard to write positive lyrics yeah and i mean that's we're still here you know like that's yeah. like the whole thing is just like dude we're not going anywhere and fucking i'm exhausted like the you know, the last song on that record is about being fucking exhausted but it, like ends with but we're still here you know yeah. like mm. um but it's worth it um like I was gonna say something, but I lost it. Uh, well, think yeah. about like, cause I even last night I felt it when we were playing. I was like, God, I am exhausted. I am. I'm. I'm fucking bummed that every night I have to say like, Yeah, fucking cops suck. The police system sucks. Like, it just seems like such a. It's like yeah. I in one point of me, one part of me is like everyone should already know this, uh, and another part is like let's say this thing because it seems like everyone can like rally behind it, you know. But um. The, the speaking things I, I grew up in like playing in this in this like very political band and and it was we were overly political and and i think that a lot of people are just like we get it we all are on the same page i don't want to fucking hear about you know how we hate cops or whatever or like you were in propaganda no yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no uh <laughs> <laughs> love um, them but it's just like or just i'm sorry i just it just makes me think of like or any of like the vegan straight edge bands where like in between songs i'm just like get to the fucking song yeah. man. we were borderline on that you know like yeah. I, I was just like dude this i mean stop. same that's why we have like sample that's why 
there's no breaks anymore. Like I, I shouldn't have a microphone. Uh, talk yeah. like you talk about talking a lot. Yeah. Ugh. Well, the the speak the talking thing was like I think Ebullition's fault. You know, I mean, like that kind of like that like '90s era of like just like you talked more than you played music. You know, and 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 mm -hmm. mostly everybody here is on the same page. Mostly, and I, experiencing Earth Crisis, uh, uh, talk about how all they were thinking about were like all the animals being slaughtered while like their van was burning on the side of the road yeah. while playing like a, a sponsored by Pabst Fest. It's pretty great. Yeah, well, fuck that band. <laughs> I was talking about like. <laughs> I was talking about like the homies like downcast, you know, like like where you kind of can back up, or like Los Crudos, you know, like totally. I'm um, sorry, I'm gonna draw the line talking because yeah. I am fucking am I'm not, not a fan. I am not of, comparing or, them, okay. by the way. That Earth is crisis I'm, is fucking dog shit. Music I am not always, comparing so, them yeah. in any <laughs> okay, fucking okay. way, and I would rather listen to like any like actual like radical band that's uh, compassionate about stuff. But every once in a while, I'm like, damn man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like i wish they had a light like comedians do in the back just like well that was the thing i realized like i think that if you're gonna be and we because we're always talking about like comedians and stuff but i think if you're if you are gonna be political if you can do it with with like comedy you're you're kind of like on the you're like gonna get through to people Dude, or when you're just a downer know, we're, we're, on stage we're a political shit. band that has dance breaks do fucking you know what I mean? hilarious like... and people can laugh and have a good time because like we're also talking about like hard awful shit we're uh, while when like the I know the genocide in Palestine has been going on for fucking ever but like as of recently like was feeling bad about playing shows cause like just be like like uh, mm. I don't want to there was a something going on where people were like oh you're playing the show while this thing is happening and doing that and like I mean like dude we're like providing art and like joy for like 20 minutes yeah can like we're just trying to do a thing that we can like fill up our cup a little bit during like like the worst it just keeps getting worse mm. right like you just you just hit the nail on the head because i feel the same way and i think about like why are we doing this does this even make sense is it even justified but like looking at people phoenix was a really strange show for me because there was like there were a lot of these like really younger cool weird trans kids like freaky like hair and like you know i'm like and they were just fucking having fun and screaming and acting crazy and i was like oh and that gave them like our our sh our show gave them a, a little bit of um leeway to kind of go home and fucking fight this thing that we're doing like with, just have know? like something to be like happy about for five fucking seconds yeah. or to like get like i'm when dude, there was uh there's a dude talking a whole bunch of shit and like at this really? bar and saying oh. like really fucked up like racist and like transphobic stuff but like in a way where he's like oh, but i'm not and then i freaked out and i threw a fucking bar Wait, on his face on, when? no oh. this was a while ago okay it was like shortly after the lockdown and i like flipped the table and threw a chair at his face wow cool it, i mean it, not cool it but felt, like flipping a table just seems but like, like I, it, I was like out of control <laughs> it, 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 it's Jesus. fucking yeah. bananas uh, <laughs> yeah. but like and Sorry, it's not cool, but I, no, I get it. But, but I understand, yeah. and like uh, the part of me was like, "It's kind of fucking cool." Fuck that guy. <laughs> yeah. Like, I it didn't feel good. I like causing violence doesn't feel good to me. Um, often it's necessary, and like, uh, but that happened. And I was talking to my therapist like shortly after, and I was like, "I don't know what the fuck happened." I'm usually have it like like uh, reeled in like well, and she's like, "Well, are you getting out of aggression?" And I was like, at the time, I was. Uh, like training Muay Thai and like doing all these things like combat sports shit I was like yeah I'm like training all the time and it's fine and she's like no 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 like actually get out of aggression not exercising I was like dude I haven't played a show in three years yeah I lost my cause like this is a way where I get out shit and I like lost my mind flipped the table and like threw a chair to fucking do this yeah. place because I was like that was that overhearing was... him talk terrible shit about people which is why like, you create art it's the same kind of fucking thing and it's yeah like it, I get so exhausted I'm on tour and like we like in, like social battery like physically emotionally all the things and then when personally when i'm like not doing it for a while i'm like can we go like, i want to i want to do yeah. that thing again can we play a fucking show i'm like upset about stuff <laughs> it's really crazy and and, and like so i, I would uh, i mean to me it's sometimes it's hard to perform and i and i would see you like when the two of you come out on stage and in and, and the last couple LA is LA obviously it's fucking cool or whatever but like when we were in let's just use Las Vegas as, a, as an example that that place sucks um, so, <laughs> so sorry uh, if you're from there but um, it was just like it just seemed like kind of a bummer and I was like oh man this show's gonna suck and I and I was so um, 
curious to see how you all would perform and it was just you just ripped hard as fuck right away and i was like oh man like i i i, I just was so um uh and captivated it. I don't know what the right word is. Like I was just like just seeing you're you're doing it for yourselves, and and it, and it felt so cool to see that. It didn't. I don't know if it like translated to the audience because they they're just whatever. But like for me to see you perform did something. You know, it felt f- fucking real and raw and honest. And I and I um where am I going with this? Fuck. Um, it just was like. I just appreciate it, and you set a you set a level of like sincerity, and I think a lot of people might miss that. Um, but I think it, the fact that you do that gives some people that are um, inter- interested in what you do the capability to say like, "Hey, you did save my life," because I think like other bands don't get that. They're like, oh yeah, we get our paychecks, our royalty checks, or whatever. Uh, we don't get those. Um, we get people saying like, hey, you fucking saved my life. And that's worth, in- I don't even know what that's worth. You know, like you can't put a dollar sign on that. That's just insane shit. It, yeah, it blows my mind. I, I don't know. Like, I, I mean, my, my thought on that is like, like one, I think we do it for ourselves, but also my thought was always like, if we play it to like four people, and like two of those people were there to see us mm. like i think about like if i went to see a band and i was like one of the two people that were there yeah and they just played like they didn't give a shit yeah i'd be like this sucks cool man yeah so that's kind of like besides just doing it for ourselves that kind of what motivates me i'm just like i want someone who's there to see us to like get a good show like yeah. i hate calling it like a performance or of course. a show but it's just like i want someone to see us playing like we give a shit because we, yeah because we do even if it's to two people or of course 200. the two people thing's funny martin atkins said that mm-hmm. to us he was like if you are going on tour and you're you get two new fans a night you're successful and i was like god this is a guy that's been in every killer band and he just says two like that's his limit and i was like okay and that really puts your shit into check you know it yeah. feels good when people are like what it, just when, happened. Yeah. When you yeah. start, it's what the fuck just is happening. This is wild shit. So, because um, like I know, because I know the you want to play well and like, and I don't want shit to sound bad either. I hate when like we have technical difficulties. But I'm definitely like, you're gonna get a fucking show. What's up? And I, <laughs> but I have fun. Like it's it's I have so much fun doing it. And like it again, it hurts and it's fucking bananas but it hurts like, physically is what you're saying yeah 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 yeah, but that's, yeah. It's saying it feels good at the same yeah time. yeah it's i could like it is a workout i feel like you just went and trained like dude, some uh, shit. here's is a 24 7 moving company i don't know if you know that <laughs> um moving and, what do you mean yeah uh because we're moving cabs mo- moving shit out <laughs> yeah. of the van yeah, into, into a the place yeah. then <laughs> ride it back in like over and over again and then you know we get our weight lifting in with the cabs and then we get like 20 minutes of cardio you know what i'm saying yeah. hire uh, us but it's <laughs> it is crazy because i remember so when we uh, let's i uh, god damn it i keep fucking talking shit about las vegas but i went outside and watched through the window and you got upset about it but um, i didn't get upset <laughs> i was fucking with you okay. for someone that fucks with people or is <laughs> like you really can't take it <laughs> anyhow people were smoking in this venue and i was like oh i'm allergic to smoke this is crazy they were smoking when we got there for load in i was just like this is a drag and, oh, um, yes. and yeah. but there was a window and i could just watch from the side i saw like it was like mm-hmm. oh this is killer this is great and so then they were performing and it was and it was <clears throat> it was gnarly and there was a guy and i don't know if he was like gonna go to the show but he this dude just like kind of <laughs> walked up and he was like eating a burrito you know and I, oh what a weirdo uh, no but i mean I, I feel like he wasn't there to like see he the was show. like trying to give himself like energy to do stuff for the day i don't think he was there to see the show <laughs> but he he just posted up behind me and i really wanted to see his reaction and i could see him in the reflection of the window so i, I was like watching him just I, I don't know. I, I I wish I knew if he was there, and he, you know, or if he just stumbled upon it. Because either way, he was like, "What the fuck?" Like this, you know. And then, and then like and then like the interludes would come on. He'd laugh his ass off, and I'm like, "Hell yeah!" This is so effective to this dude. I really hope that he just accidentally stumbled upon it. But either way, I mean, because if he if he knew it, then he would have like obviously liked it. But I, I wanted him to like just be like, "This is fucking wild shit." Eating his I mean, burrito. It was. Know? I feel. I I wish Scott was there, but um. The, the dwarf show talking about in Pensacola like th- it was two shows that ended up getting combined because of whatever so and they so, didn't ask you like there weren't like fans or something oh probably fuck no <laughs> okay because I, um, I heard about the show and I was like oh my god no it was they were combined and when I found out about it I was like oh no and I was like are these are 
they canceled? And like, cause I, <laughs> and it ends up they're just, it's just like bad lyrics. And then, but then I found out the basis is, is a piece of shit. But anyway, uh-huh. we already played whatever. What kind of piece of shit? He was the bassist in Queens of Stone Age and apparently like, like, uh, beat up his wife or pulled a shotgun on her or some what? shit. Oh. Maybe the one that was like, you know, like on the, the, the first Queens album. Sure. Don't fucking With know. With Dave Grohl. I'm sure that somebody's going to somebody's gonna comment on all the stuff and be like, um, actually, yeah. no uh, one's going to comment. People don't listen yeah. to this podcast. Cool. Uh, well, they will now because we're here. Oh, yeah. Of um, Luke, you're great. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, okay. there is like, what's what was what was fun for like that show? I'm just like, oh, have fun. Have fun following us. Ah, I and then, love like, that. I mean, I hate and, saying it out loud, but I love it. Well, it, and then like, and then like the the folk because it was it was like old dude rock. It was like fine, old dude bar fine, like a, attendance, but like it was cool to have like people come up and be like, "Never heard of you, Jesus fucking Christ." Yeah, can I get a shirt? Yeah, and then <laughs> uh, and then like you know try to look for that dude with his rebel flag jacket because I was like, I'm gonna go home with this, but. We didn't find him. Yeah. Wait, go home with his. I'm going to take it off your fucking back. Oh. Uh, I thought you were going to take him home. Yeah. <laughs> to show him. Yeah, man. I'm like, you know, I don't. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Let me um, fucking pull up like a rebel fag joke. The That band. Uh, I know. That dude. Wait, I thought it was Confederate fag. Close enough. Is that the band? Yeah, that we're was doing, the band. We're doing a Confederate fag tribute band called Rebel Fag. It's awesome. Is this real? No. Okay. Uh, there was a band though called <laughs> Confederate Fag, right? It's I like know. someone yeah, yeah, from yeah. Inhumanity for, or something. Either or it was like Inhumanity or what the fu- yeah. Yes. What a great band name, but you can't do it now, unfortunately. But God, what a fucking great band name! Because it was already a band, or because of I don't know if you could have the F word in a, in your in your band name and in, in we could. Yeah. Is it acceptable? I'm a faggot. I know. <laughs> right. I know, but um. <laughs> God damn it! I should probably be gay because then I can get away with so much cooler shit. Let's go, baby. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, tomorrow, Justin just dropping f bombs yeah. all over the place. Well, we've talked about this a little bit because I I would like I mean I grew up being called fag most of my life. Uh, I feel like I own it. I feel like I should be able to. I, it's like I thought it was my middle name for a while. So um, there's that. I'm writing a book and I really want to call it Fag Church, and that just won't hmm. happen. I can't. I can't get away with that, and it's fine. I have a better name uh, now, but I won't, I thought that would be the coolest name. It would be a good name for a band. No, yeah. I mean the, Fag Church. Uh, yeah. Here is Fag Church Collective. It's like our middle middle name. Yeah. <laughs> welcome, welcome to, like to the choir. All right, let's get back on track here. The collective thing is is wild though, you know, um, because how do you so you have some of the vocals in your tracks when you're playing. Mm. Is that is that um, acceptable? <laughs> Are you talking about the faggy vocals? Wait, no. There's just there's obviously the vocals no, that aren't uh, yours so coming through that. Yeah. Line. What do you mean? Is it acceptable? Do you accept it? You're a pretty judgy person. I am judgy. I do accept it. You 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 your band is blowing my mind every night, and I oh. and I and I think that um, you could probably do whatever the fuck you want, and it'd be like so sick. But I do. For me personally, I'm like, God, we should probably have someone fucking sing this shit. Or I yeah. would just say, like, why don't you just sing all the lyri- all those lyrics too? Uh, there, so there's a couple of tracks on there that we that I do other folks' lyrics, but then I fucking forget them, and so I just do whatever. It's the 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 one the one that we play that has hmm, which ones? There's the Is trust it? the process, yeah, and that's like Frank Euro from My yeah. Chemical Romance, and so like that's why I was like. I don't want to do those vocals and we can just put them in there and I feel fine with that. Yeah. And I, I can just do the backing tracks and if it sounds fine, it's cool. And if not, it's a fun song to play. Um, but then there's the, I'm not going to like the <coughs> judgment night, the song with gauche, the hip hop track at the end. Like, I don't know. It'd be stupid if those vocals weren't there. I'm not going to rap them. Yeah. Um, Why not? I'm an incredible uh, uh, rapper, but yeah. you know, I just would hate for, just don't want to show off. I, I, I mean, I, I, that wasn't a criticism. I feel like a total asshole now. But no, like, you just, yeah, I didn't hear it that way. You just said, like, okay, cool. Yeah. Cause we, Maybe Planet stop. B has always has like <laughs> other singers, and I'm like, I, we have to cut those parts out of the, mm-hmm. of the song when yeah. we play it. We want to play those songs. And like, we, we, we wouldn't be able to play literally any of our record if we, That's and like, true. we can't, we can't like have it just, and like the, the song with like Shirley Manson and AC Sapphire, like the We're Still Here, like, dude, that part rules yeah and when we did it live where like we didn't have like a back and i'm just like 
mm, it's still a fucking awesome song but like that part loses so much power yeah um yeah and if we're gonna have like drums bass other things like we're we can just put the vocals in there too of course yeah mm-hmm. so what happens when there's a full band what 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 how does that work? Can you just the shifting back and forth is like seems like a, yeah, a, a little, nightmare. That, that little sampler, you know, like a little sampler pad. But I think we got to figure out something else because it yeah, went haywire. Um, so when you when you when you're playing drums and someone's playing guitar and someone's playing bass, yeah. you you have another separate track or how does that? work? I have a, a I have like a sampler pad. Yeah, which, and I would mostly just use it for the 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 interludes like the and and because we there were, we don't play to a click track or anything and so shit. So you're like. Song stopping, uh, starting. Uh, yeah, know, so like, it, and it's and I gotta like that is one where, but you can't do the songs with the other guest vocals. We do, do it. We just, you, I do have the, the I samples. Just, I just no, we uh, we do it. I just sing those parts. Uh, yeah. So it's just weird that you would you would make that that distinction between like the two kinds of sets where you would sometimes use their vocals. And well, I think like one of them is. I've the, never seen you as a full band. I really wish I could have that to to sort of have a better concept or wrap my brain around this concept yeah i don't know it's it's pretty much just this i was gonna say it's the same thing but it's not at all yeah <laughs> it's not <laughs> well, i just they played two shows with this band orchid in in, in new york right and, and uh one in philly and one in new york yeah. yeah and like one night is a two-piece and then the next night yeah. they didn't tell them though and they just showed up as a, they're like what the actual fuck man <laughs> yeah. like that's so funny it's a fun it's not even a prank i was just being like not a prank, but it's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you put, like, effort and thought into doing that, and that's cool. Most most normal bands would have been, like, we're going to do this both nights or this both mm-hmm. nights. Not Yeah. Like... But also, most normal bands wouldn't have played in Stewart, Florida, like, one night, and then Scott flew to Philly because they played a show the night before we played. I drove the van 20 hours to Austin. Then I flew to Philly. Then we played. Then we played New York. And then we flew back to Austin to finish up our tour. So most bands wouldn't do that either. Yeah, because we're not most bands. We're fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am. I meant to make some decisions. My bad. We've uh, done it. I mean, with Satanic Planet and Planet V, we've done like back-to-back shows. But they're different bands with different. I know, songs. but I'm saying it's this that idea of doing it. Sometimes I'm like, this is fucking dumb, dude. Like, yeah. why don't we just like. It's fun to like make people like mm-hmm. I like keeping people on their toes. It's cool. Well, okay, I, I but I but it is two different. I mean, he's talking about like, the two different. Bands, I get it. Yeah, mm-hmm. where where like it would be funny if like Planet B did it t- differently. Yeah. Yeah. Or you do yeah. Satanic Planet mm-hmm. B, and it's just the same time both bands. That would be. I don't know. It pretty yeah, much it is. I, <laughs> I I don't think Lucian and I could do each other's parts in the, the bands and stuff. So, but um, uh, let's talk about you guys. A little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The mess. So yeah, Jen and the mess over here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. She never shuts the fuck up. Uh, <laughs> um, we did this. Uh, our what we did. We had this podcast come out with Joe Plummer, and he, it was called. He has a, he has his own podcast called Tour Stories, and they always talk about stuff. Joe Plummer. Yeah. Like the the drummer. Oh, like not the person that Sarah Palin always talked about, or whoever that. This is for Joe Plummer. Remember that thing? Oh, that. that? No, this yeah. is P L U M M E R. Oh. Yeah, Sarah Palin. Jesus. <laughs> okay, so um, anyhow, he has these tour stories. So uh, it's like, and he like tells stories, and I I don't want to bite on his podcast, but like, I'm fascinated. There's got to be some crazy. What's some crazy shit that's happened to you? Because you your band is um, not like. It's not like you guys are, because you kind of, I don't know. I feel like maybe you're not trying to fight people, obviously, but like, I feel like you would maybe upset some shitheads. And I would, hey, have you guys had any issues somewhere? Besides the Confederate flag person and That's it? That's the whole, well, at 13 years I'm or whatever thinking. it was? <laughs> it's weird. It's like, like, we've definitely played shows where we're like, this is fucking sketchy. Yeah. Like, I also like, think like, we, we look like what's gonna happen, and like then, green room kind of shit, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, and then, and then usually like everything is fine. It's like, it's like one like, of two things, either because I think we look fucking bananas when we play. Oh yeah, and I don't know. I've never have I ever. I don't. We've never had to like threaten anybody or do anything. I don't think anybody. Well, I don't know. Yeah, we don't. We don't fuck with 
us. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like, I, I'm trying to think, like, or usually, like, it'll be the shitheads that were like, that was fucking, whoa, that was crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, maybe I feel... we're, we, we're less getting in fights and we're converting them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but, you, you know, because I feel like maybe, uh, because you're from the East Coast, and and like you, obviously when you you were like, you 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 went to Earth Crisis, where I would have went to Downcast, you know. So. <laughs> I did. Uh, I just know the story. Um, I went to First Family Values. It was fucking sick. Romstein opening for Limp Bizkit. That's hilarious. It was awesome. We're, I'm trying to stick to this hardcore thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Yes. <laughs> In the hardcore world, you know, like, I mean, there's this, we're, you're on, you're like, I, again, going back to like where we started this whole podcast, right? I feel like your band is on the, the, you're, you're the, you're like the progressive face of what punk and hardcore should be and changing. That's, that's kind. I think, I don't, thank you. Yeah. It is meant, it is meant as a compliment. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking that there. Yeah. I'm just like, are we? That's cool. You, you are for sure. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <Just, laughs> like, yeah. Enough of the dick sucking. I'm sorry, but I just feel like there's no, this. No, no, no. I mean, yeah. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. I just feel like um, you, you, you're able to somehow infiltrate the the standard, and I and I don't know how you did it, and I'm I'm just grateful that you did, or really or that you are doing it. Someone thank has you. to fucking do it, so thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It. Uh, shucks. <laughs> Thanks, Emma. No, I I feel very like I don't know. We've put a lot of fucking work into this, and it's it's been. You can tell. Thanks. You can tell from the second your show starts. You can tell, and also like from the first song on the record. Like you know, you can tell it's really impressive shit. Thanks, man. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I like to, to be, ah whatever. No, no, what? Or I was just gonna say like, I don't know, like. Like I have like, I have a locust tattoo for a reason, and like I th- like a lot of that like, you didn't cover it up. No, it's on this. I was just joking. Yeah. <laughs> this, I'm working on it. Covering um, it up. <laughs> but like it's just, like I'm trying to like. You also have a um. What's the skull one right there on your leg? That's a um. Oh, that's our like. That's oh, ours. I thought. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't really see the whole thing, but I thought it was integrity, and I was like, integrity. Nah. Are you a fan of that band? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> laughing what no it's like <laughs> you, you asked the yes or yeah. no question i liked to tell you when i was it. 11 you know yeah like, that's around yeah. that's about right <laughs> it stopped after yeah. that um, um fuck, where are we going with this just, but like i don't know i it, it feels crazy to me that i it feels and seems like we are a band that is comparable to band like i'm just like oh my god like i started listening to like people were somebody last night was like i started listening to you when i was 12 years old and i was like Oh, and he's like, I didn't mean to make you sound old or They're whatever. Like, I'm and I was 13 like, now. <laughs> <laughs> like, get the fuck out of here, kid. Um, no, it's 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 insane. Like when when we started it, I I didn't think any of this would like. That wasn't the goal to get to what it what whatever we are now. But it's, it's what it is. You mean like the longevity thing, or I just mean, like impactful through impactful, like yeah, yeah yeah. I did. I didn't. Like, yeah. Well, it's funny because um, last night Nick Zinner was there and, and he was talking about how he um, ran in, um, from the Yaya's. Yeah, yeah, right. And he was talking about this friend of uh, – the first time I met him was at this show. They were opening for Liars and John Spencer Blues Explosion, and mm-hmm. they and they just, like, annihilated – the the, sh- the show that was it was great it's the but best. there was there was a guy that was there that that sit that, that at that at that show that Nick brought up that he had recently seen um and and met his daughter and so he was like yeah since that show I I had this daughter and now she's twenty three and like he met her and he was like what the fuck like you have like this full grown human being since that you know and it just seems weird um to, for him and and when you think about it you're like yeah a lot of stuff has happened in that amount of time with like it it's everything and it's because it's like 13 years is kind of nothing but it's like so much for like it like it's it's both it holds multitudes but like it, yeah it feels crazy i mean think how it's gonna be in another 13 years like if we're even here on this planet you know mm. as, a, as a species the sun cannot blow up fast enough <laughs> <laughs> um on that note 
maybe maybe we should just call it. We do have to get to a, a show in, in a little bit. But do you have anything you guys want to just talk about, blurt out? Like, what are you up to next? Or, I don't know, like, hype something? I don't know. Or we can just all fuck off and, and end it right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck off. Fuck off. Cool, awesome. There we go. <laughs> I love you guys, though. Seriously. That was great. Thanks. And there you have it. Episode of 42 <laughs> of the Cult and Culture Podcast. Thank you to you, the viewer or listener, um, to our sponsors, to our friends at Ruinous Media. Um, yeah. Andy, yeah. Becky. Yes. No thanks Ruby. to the Karens of the left. <laughs> <laughs> They're ruining it. Um, yeah. We're psyched. Um, that was such a crazy podcast. Such great people. Um, if you get a chance to see Here's Collective live, you will not be disappointed. Um, every single show we played with them went off. So, um, yeah, check them out if you can. Like, uh, subscribe, share our stuff, whatever the hell people do with podcasts. Um I feel like our podcast is finally getting uh, the attention or some more attention that it deserves. Um, even mm-hmm. the deep cuts have been making it around to people that I would not expect. So hopefully this gets to the people that need to see it. Um, I don't know. The world's changing in these slow increments. And um, if you're not on board, uh, we're coming for you. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, thanks a lot. We'll see you on the next episode. Oh, uh, yeah. Cult and Culture is a ruinous media podcast proudly sponsored by Earthquaker Devices, Heartwork Coffee, Fender, and Diodario. Planet B. Planet B.